Hey everyone, Jay here from Spro Coffee. We're back at the shop here again. It's another week of uh, the Corona 19, the coronavirus, Corona, did whatever, whatever it is. We're basically all of you are at home, and I'm here, and and I don't know why I'm here because ain't nobody here either. Anyway, so last week, a buddy of mine, Mike Rosales, down in Austin, Texas, and he was asking me about, hey, you know, my machine. I put the espresso in. I put the porta filter in and my machine does not produce any coffee and I, and I didn't really understand what he was talking about first and you know we talked a bit about it and he kind of you know worked it out he was, he's pressing the button the machine is on and no coffee's coming out and he really didn't understand why and so um, eventually we figured it out of course but you know, I thought we'd make a video about it so that we could you know talk about troubleshooting that you may troubleshooting any problems you may have at home while making coffee and this one we troubleshooting espresso so so what was happening with mike's machine is that he would you know he's got this pretty nice uh espresso machine at home and he was putting the you know put the porta filter put the porta filter in the machine hit the button nothing came out and really what that is is um it's because there's too much resistance of the by the coffee in the porta filter so the water doesn't flow through that's essentially it so what is really espresso making so basically espresso we're taking espresso coffee or there really is no espresso thing no, there, there's no such thing as espresso coffee espresso is just another way of making coffee so we've got the beans we've got the beans we're taking this bean that this one little bean here right we're taking this one little bean and we're now going to crush it grind it, slice it, whatever you want to call it, into very fine particulates. And these fine particulates, um, we're taking the coffee and we're basically crushing it, slicing it into two to three thousand particulates. So we've we've really broken it down and if you, you can see it's a nice fine powder, not quite as fine as like talc powder, maybe definitely coarser than let's say like cornstarch. Um, but you can definitely feel, so you can definitely feel the grains, um, and then one thing to to know if you're close to your a good espresso grind is that if you squeeze it between your two fingers and you look, you can see residue left on your fingers. And that's essentially the oils from the coffee being um, you know left behind. Everybody has their own idea of how much coffee to use, you know, so. In the very old school Italian way, there you, you will use seven, 14 grams of coffee for a double shot. And so for one, to make one big double shot porta filter, 14 grams. Under the old school third wave style, 21 grams. And you know, people will modify that and kind of, I guess the newer idea is that they want to use less coffee so now they're using 18 grams. And in the case of Mike's, um, Mike's example at home, he's measuring out 18 grams of coffee for every double shot. And so he puts that into his portafilter, he puts it in the grinder, grinds it up, puts it in the portafilter, and then goes. So what happens is in the basket, the coffee, you put the coffee in, and the coffee in the basket provides resistance to the water flow. So the machine, well, it's supposed to give you about 135 psi or eight and a half to nine atmospheric bars of pressure of water pressure that's going to extract all of the coffee so all of the coffee solubles into the water and out into your cup and so the idea of the coffee is that it's supposed to provide enough resistance to get the proper extraction and in the case of, of Mike's where he's really you know, basically the, the coffee was just too finely ground. So the too finely ground created a matrix that was too tight for the water to flow through and just basically prevented the water from flowing at all. So nothing came out. The, recti the, the remedy to this is to just basically coarsen the grind slightly and um, that should give the flow. Uh, especially if you're using a methodology where you're measuring all of your coffee beforehand. So if you're 
if you're measuring it out 18 grams, 18 grams, 18 grams, or, or whatever your measurement is, then you should have relative consistency in how much coffee you're using. And if your other techniques are, are good and consistent, then really the last thing that you need to worry about is the grind itself, you know. And of course, coffee being an agricultural product, a natural product, it may or may not change uh, depending on the, the weather conditions, the atmospheric conditions. So coffee may swell or contract slightly depending on humidity. Uh, it could change a little bit during, because of temperature. And really, um, like here, I don't worry too much about that because we're kind of doing it on the fly and we're doing it every day, multiple times a day, so we can make minor adjustments as we're going along. Uh, in a home setting, you know, of course the home setting is a little bit, di is a lot different. Um, you you may only have a pound or two of coffee, so you don't want to burn a lot of it trying to figure it out. Uh, that's very understandable. Um, so we're going to go over a little bit some things to look for to help guide you to make espresso, because uh, and that's that's what today's video is about. So now we've got the. Uh, the head cam on we're gonna look at uh, making espresso here so first of all let's start off with the grinder as you can see this is a basic uh, Mauser major grinder and the hopper looks a little bit low so we're gonna fill it up what you really want to do is keep your hopper as full as you can um, here we've got a lot of coffee so we can do it pretty easily and what that does is that it keeps a constant pressure of coffee on the on the burr set so that there's no popcorn effect that's happening um, and giving in, inconsistent results so as you can see the grinder here is a little bit let's get rid of all of this older stuff so that we can start fresh grind a, grind a little bit out of that good all right so like we talked about, we want to have, we, we use here a 21 gram setting. So let's start off with that. We're going to take our scale, tear it out. So it's all teared. Grind coffee. All right, that's probably good. We're going to dispense it, dose it into the basket. Eh, probably about there is good. Let's see. Okay, that's that's not right. <laughs> I'll just try that again. That darn cable's in the way. Uh, tear that back. All right. a little bit off so if you can use a scale that'll give you really kind of more accurate results all right 21 that's great now we're going to distribute you can use different tools like these distribution tools I I kind of like the old school way so I just like to make sure that there's no real divots and no too many high points so I kind of push everything to the center just kind of give it a nice sloping that way the idea is that if it's kind of in the center like a cone as I tamp it'll push it back down and so we're going to take our tamper this is the Reg Barber old school tamper so basically just going to set that down we want to make sure that it's it's coming down even give a slight twist and that will leave us with a nicely formed puck that is flat that should provide even resistance. I'm clearing off the wings and every and the rim of the, the basket. Let's flush our coffee. We're gonna flush our group head, and then we're just gonna pull and see what happens. I'll grab the timer's probably better so that we can see. Whoops. <laughs> All right, uh, eight, nine. So it's coming out. And we're looking for some some things to flow. See that 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 twisting with it? That's done. 
So we're right now at a good amount of volume, nice color crema, right? And a little bit of flecking, very light. You can kind of see that. But the flavor is, uh, it's short. So we got 21 seconds of, of, of um, extraction time. The flavor is definitely, go is definitely on the tarty side that we would, then we would like to have. So we're gonna try that again. And so, but here, let's go back and, and really look at, uh, at some of the things that we're looking for. So the flow is pretty good. You know, we'd like to have more resistance because it, to get us in the parameters we'd like. But now let's look at our puck. And our puck will tell us a lot of things. So here we see that the puck looks a little bit wet, a little bit soupy, right? It's not so distinct. So what we're looking for, there's a screw that holds the dispersion screen in place. What we really want to see is clear impact of the dispersion screw and the, um, and the screen in the, the coffee itself. Right now it's kind of muddled because it looks kind of wet. And then also notice here we see a little bit of a channeling, this little hole. I hope you can see that. That's basically extraction, uh, under extraction. That is where the pressure of the water has exploited the the imperfection in the in the ma the resist the matrix of in the imperfection in the matrix of resistance matrix of resistance that's what we're going to use it so a lot of that water is going through there so that's probably where we're getting our sour tones from okay now what we're also going to do is we're going to take this we're going to use our finger and we're going to find a spot we're going to press it in here and it feels a little bit soft also it feels a, a bit damp you know, and that tells us, you know, we're not getting enough, you know, not getting enough coffee. Then let's knock it out. We're going to knock it out. Oh, let's get rid of this so that we can see. Let's knock it out. So look at the way it came apart. So it came out. So it came out. It's, it's crumbly. It's crumbly. It's very loose. It's very wet. I mean, it's, it's moist, not wet, but moist. Okay. So that tells us, you know, we're not getting enough compaction. And then now let's look at the basket. The basket itself, we see a little bit of residual oil here. Residual oil in your basket really is an indicate can be two things. You know, it's an indication of both under extraction and over extraction. And, you know, I mean, I know that sounds maybe a contradiction, but it really depends. You really kind of have to know what's going on in order for you to figure that out. So if there is no oils, then pretty much you've stopped the shot at its optimal point where it's gotten all of its, all of the essence and goodness out of the coffee. And that's it. You've just gotten it just right. If you've gone too short, there will be oils. If you've gone too long, there will be oils. So here in this case, based on what we saw for the shot, I'm thinking we went just a little bit over, right? So if you remember during the flow, as though the, the coffee is coming out of this, the, the spout, we saw that it was turning a little bit blonde and also we saw some shaking. That's an, those are indicators that the coffee is done. Really, from in my perspective, the coffee talks to us. The coffee is telling us when it's ready, when it's finished, when it's good. We just have to be able to listen and, and clue in at the right moment. And so this one, we're a little bit late. We're also a bit short, 21 seconds. That's that's pretty short. We want to... So in this case, you know, we could take several steps. We could make the grind finer, or we could maybe even add a little more coffee. That just depends on you. But really, we want to stay with just, let's say, our, our measurement of 21 grams. But, however, we did see this channeling. So this channeling means that there could be, I mean, that could be a, a big factor, you know. So we're not going to actually make any changes this time. We're just going to pull the shot. I'm going to rinse this out. We'll reuse our demi tasse cup because there's no reason not to. And I don't really want to have to do too much cleaning <laughs> all right so let's try this again we're gonna dry out our basket
make sure that everything's clean. Come back, grind some more coffee. Double check the tear. And then go back. Let's see here, how much is that? 21, yeah, you know it, you know it, you know it. All right, so back again, we're tamping, making sure that it's level. off so you just saw them I, there's always some like excess um, coffee I like to put it back to try to reuse it as much as we can and um, yeah so flush to make sure that it's clear all right flows coming out all right there we go slowing down a little bit so as you can see if you just look at the two shots, 21 grams in both. We didn't change any of the grind settings. Already there's a tremendous difference in the way that this shot is performing. It's definitely got more resistance. It's coming out slower, we're getting darker, redder, flecky crema. I mean, this is really just a different kind of... Oh, stop now. So, oops, got a little bit a little carried away with that talking. So here we really, I stopped it. I know it says 31. I, took me longer to stop the timer than it did the uh, but we're talking now um, a different looking coffee more darker reddish brown coloration no flecking still um, but good color oh was so like if you look at this right here like there was actually a little pinhole here. Oh, okay. But that's all gone now, uh -huh. and so it's still a little bit on the, the the wet side. But the shot, yeah, timed out beautifully, and the coloration was really nice. Thank and so you. enjoy. I will enjoy. All right, see you later. <laughs> so as you can see here in the in the in the like I was just saying, where we we pulled the the portafilter out and. It's a little, it's the, the juiciness of the puck, the moisture is still the same. It was a little bit soft right there. There could have been some, but there was really no, like there might be, you might be able to see that slit of pinhole, but really we got what we're looking for in, in most respects for that last shot. Of course I gave Waj the, uh, you can see Waj outside. I gave Waj the shot because he's a, He's a regular of ours who comes in and always gets espresso, so he happened to come in at the right moment. And what do you think, Waj? Yeah, it was great. Ah, excellent. Perfect. All right. Have a great day. Thank you. So look at that. So look at the uh, the crema looks pretty good. Yeah, look at that. That's kind of what you want. Nice and dark, still holding up. All right, let's go back to our puck. So it's still, you know, a little bit on the... Uh, I'd like it to be drier, but I think the dryness... And the, the, the stronger compaction, the, meaning the impression of the screen and the, the uh, screw, that's something that really is going to, uh, I think that's really when you have more quantity of coffee. But let's see what happens. I'm going to knock it out. Oh, look at that. Look at that first. There is no oils. Perfect. That's just about, almost you can't get much better than that. Now the puck still is coming out, it's still coming apart, it's pretty flaky and, you know, so that's not, that's not ideal, but really all of these are things that, okay, so what do these mean? These mean, these are just indicators, right? Indicators, so let's say in a professional environment, you know, we're not able to taste the drinks that we're making. We have to rely upon visual cues in order to determine whether or not the shots are, are good or, or enjoyable or going to be enjoyable for our guests. So um, these are the things we're using. We're using visual clues, the way the shot is coming out, the flickering, um, the color of the crema, the level, the volume, and then we'll use these visual clues after. So these are things that are after, right? So uh, I'll look at these, the puck, how does it feel? How does how is the compaction? Uh, how does it come out of the the basket? And then I'll look at the basket to, to see, you know, are the oils? Did I stop it correctly? Too short? Too long? 
and then we can make adjustments from there. So for example, if it was, if this second shot turned out to be too fast, still, if we're still getting 21 seconds and that sour note and there was no channeling happening, then I might start to consider adjusting the grind here. Um, but since that's not happening, we're still right on the money, you know. And another thing, the question that, that Mike had asked was, you know, how often are you changing your grind? And, you know, I know a lot of uh, professional baristas will tell you that they, they come in and they dial in, they, they do all these shots to make sure it's right. I found in my experience that for the most part, I don't really need to change the grind too often. Like, I mean, I, this is the first two shots that we pulled today. Um, we just kind of opened a few minutes ago. So uh, we haven't really, I haven't really had the need to change the grind too much uh, over the last two weeks. Maybe a minor tweak here and there, what I'm really looking at. And I don't know why that, that may necessarily be that the shots perform how we're looking for. I mean, we've got the, the coffee that we're using is, you know, of course we're blending and roasting it and, and doing it to our specifications and we're getting the chocolate the, the berry tones and the nuttiness that we want out of the coffee for the espresso. So I don't think you necessarily need to change it every day. Uh, you just need to pay attention and you know, you may need to tweak the, the, the grind as you go on a shot to shot basis. Really. I mean, I'm, I'm watching the shots as I make them every time. And so that's kind of it. Yeah, that's about it. And, um, well, let's do one more so that we can see. Huh? <laughs> All right, so we're pulling this shot. This one's coming out. Ah, oh, there we go. That's nice. That cacao. Um, and then there's some of the berry, this fruitiness, and then this nuttiness on the finish. That's really what we're looking for for espresso. All right, so that's pretty much it for this week, uh, for this, this video. Um, if you have questions about us, coffee making, espresso making, any kind of coffee questions, feel free to put them in the comments below and uh, let us know. Be happy to answer any questions you might have. And uh, what else is there to say? You know, the whole usual YouTube thing. Like our video, subscribe, hit the bell. Um, we also have, uh, oh, if you need coffee, we have We have great coffee, and uh, this is our Agent 99 Espresso. So it's got a you know nice uh, nice blend of coffees, roasted to kind of more of a medium. It's not too dark. We don't really like dark coffee here. Uh, as far as you know, we don't want to make the espresso too dark. Uh, so we've got that on our website, SpurrowCoffee.com, and uh, come down and check that out. And what else? There? We have more videos coming. Yeah, you know, I never know really what to say of these things. Everybody else looks so polished on YouTube, and I'm definitely not that polished. But buy coffee if you can. Buy coffee. Uh, we'd love to have you. Uh, if you want to come down to the shop, come and visit us 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. daily now. So uh, until this COVID crisis is over, which may not happen for quite a while. So, but keep your question, keep your comments, questions coming. Love to hear from you, and uh, thanks for tuning in.